Peshem Hashem Na'asev Nasliach. Welcome back everyone to our weekly shiur on the parasha with the perush of the Zerah Shimshon. Tonight's parasha, we're covering parashat Vayetze Ot Aleph, the first ma'amar of the Zerah Shimshon. Um, the shiur is dedicated for the refuah shalema of kol chole am Yisrael. Um, especially Yosef ben Monavar. Um, <clears throat> and also for uh, also Yehuda ben Afarin, and it should be Leilu Nishmat as well. And obviously Leilu Nishmat, the Zera Shimshon himself, may he be Melitz Yosher and bring all of the guarantees that he gives in his introduction for all of Am Yisrael. Bezrat Hashem, smachot and weddings and children for all of us, all of Am Yisrael. So the Zerah Shimshon says, in the Midrash Yalkut Oni says, Vayifka b'amakom. The Pasuk says, in Bereshit Chav Chet Yud Aleph, it says that Yaakov Avinu on his way out of Eretz Yisrael, he was going to, on his way to Lavan's house, and, um, it gets dark on him and he goes to sleep. Where's the place that he goes to sleep? Tradition has it, it was the place of the Bet HaMikdash where he put his head to go to sleep. And that's the famous place that Yaakov Avinu has that famous dream of the ladder. The Yalkut says, Vaifkaba makom, when he reached, I mean, when he reached that place, La'avor v'na'asaha olam kekotel lefanav. The entire world became like a wall before him. What happened? Yaakov Avinu was going on his way. He wasn't planning to really go to sleep. In fact, it wasn't even nighttime yet. That's why the Pasuk says, Kiva HaShemesh, Vayal and Sham Kiva HaShemesh. He decided to sleep there because the sun set. Why does it need to tell us that the sun set? I mean, I she just that. right. So the answer is that Hakadosh Baruch Hu made the sun set early because he wanted Yaakov Avinu to stay where he was. That's what happened. That's why it says Kiva Hashemesh. It explains many explain that Kiva Hashemesh means Kiba Hashemesh. Kiba means to turn off, to go out. The sun went out early before its time. Shakadosh Baruch Hu kiba Hashem, and Shakadosh Baruch Hu turned off the sun, so to speak. Melamed sheishkia b'Hakadosh Baruch Hu etachama. This teaches us that Hakadosh Baruch Hu, on purpose, set the sun early in order to have Yaakov Avinu stay in his spot. Kedel edaberim Yaakov Avinu in order for Hashem to speak to Yaakov Avinu. Now. One second. Yes, <clears throat> we have to understand. So we said that the Yalkut Shimoni, the Midrash says that when Yaakov Avinu was going on his way, he was continuing on his way, the entire world became like a wall before him, meaning the universe somehow, the, the earth did not let him pass through. It's like he was being prevented from going any further. That's what the Yalkut says. The world became like a wall before him. He couldn't go any further. Like everything was going against him in order for him to stay. The sun went down. The world was like, things were happening for him not to go through. Question is, he's asking, what's the big deal? What was the difference for the world for him to just go? 
So much so that the Midrash says the world had to make like an imaginary wall before Yaakov Avinu for him not to be able to pass through. What was so important about Yaakov Avinu staying in that spot? What was so crucial? It was the gate of heaven. Right, so it was the gate of heaven. whoop de doo Fine, but like you have to understand. Okay, he'll come back to it. When we say the world had to stop him, it means that there was something crucial happening here and he had to stay. He couldn't leave. He can't. What was happening? So to, this, to answer this question, in fact, the Zerash Rishon has a few questions. We're not going to be able to cover all of them. Okay? So that's why I'm skipping some of the other questions. I'm going to go to the first answer of the question that we just asked. So he says, to give the answer, that why is it that the world really cared whether Yaakov Avinu stays or, or goes? My data be pirke da Rabbi Lazar perek lamed hey. In pirke da Rabbi Lazar it says in perek lamed hey perek thirty five. It says. So what did Yaakov Avinu do in that spot? It says he took stones, put them under his head, and he slept on the stones. Yaakov Avinu slept, put his head on the stones. It says, ha'even." He took the stone, Asher Sam Merashotav, that he had put underneath his head. Me'asa Kadosh Baruch Hu ha'even. That stone that Yaakov Avinu slept on, put his head on, after he put his head on it, what did Akadosh Baruch Hu do with that stone? Now remember, this is a very, uh, it's, it's a subject that is discussed a lot in the, in the, in the commentaries. Yaakov Avinu took multiple stones, put it under his head. That's what the Pasuk says. Right? And then when, after he wakes up, it says he took the stone that he put under his head. To which the Mepharshim all say that the stones became one. Just keep that in mind as we go through. What did HaKadosh Baruch Hu do with this stone? Okay, listen to this. So to speak, it says Hashem put his right foot on the stone and it sinked it, it sank into the earth. This is Prikata Rebbe Azar. It sank into the earth. At Imketa Homot, it went all the way down to the depth of the depths of the earth. Ve'asa otah senif la'aretz. Ke'adam shows it senif la'kipa. It made it like a, like, like a support. HaKadosh Baruch Hu made this stone into a support for the earth. Lefichach, therefore, nikret, this stone is called, today, what do we call this stone? What? Close. Even Shetia. It's called the Even Shetia. Which is basically Yesod HaOlam. This stone became the foundation of the world. That stone became known as the foundation of the world. Shemisham Hu Tabur HaAretz. That entire support of the earth comes from this one stone. Umisham Nimtachat Kol HaAretz Ve'aleha Hechal Hashem. And everything spurs out of this, and on top of this stone, not directly, directly, but where this stone is located, that's where Hechal Hashem is. The Kodesh HaKodashim was built upon the location of this stone. Not just any location, the Kodesh HaKodashim was on the Evan HaShetiyah that had sank into the earth. That's where HaKadosh Baruch Hu built the Beit HaMikdash. That's the location. Shene Emar. As it says right there in Bereshit, Yaakov Avinu said, And this stone that I put under my head, and then I made it into a matseva, and then I made it into a, um, and I made this stone into a uh, mizbeach, an altar, 
Yihye bet Elokim. It shall be the house of God. Yaakov Avinu, thousands of years before, already said, this is going to be called Beit Elokim, the house of God, Beit HaMikdash. And the Beit HaMikdash was built there, and the Hechal Hashem, the main room in the Beit HaMikdash, was built upon this stone. Even Ashetia. Veniremikan. So now, what did we just say? The stone that Yaakov Avinu put under his head became the support stone of the entire earth. It became the pillar holding up the earth. What do you mean, like physically or like not the core, right, of the earth? I'm not talking about that. I don't know if, it, no, I don't think it's like it became the core of the earth. But in a sense, it became a crucial part of the existence of the earth. So before the stone, there was not, there was nothing? So he has, right? That's the question that we're going to, f- you finally, oh, you know. She ah. didn't give credit before. I'm just kidding. See? I probably spoke too early. <laughs> you can go home now. No, no, I probably <laughs> spoke too early. I probably, I probably no, no, pl- please go home. Venire <laughs> mikan. <laughs> 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 It seems from here, Shadain lo nivro yisodot haolamat sha'ashta. It seems from here that the Midrash, Pirkei Darbil Azar is saying, that until now, the support system of the, the world, the earth, was not built yet. Until Yaakov Avinu put his head on the stone. Velachen hayam makpid haolam shelo ya'avor. And therefore, the world did not let Yaakov pass through until he slept there. Meaning, the earth was saying, basically, we're desperate. The earth needs its support, it needs its existence, and it depends on you staying here. That's why the Midrash says that the world became like a wall, would not let Yaakov Avinu pass. Because it needed its existence to continue. <laughs> because with this, it strengthened its pillars of support, and therefore, therefore the world decided to become like a wall, to let Yaakov Avinu know that if he doesn't stay here and ensure the existence of the world with these pillars, the entire world would cease to exist. He won't have to pass through anything because there's nothing going to be left for him to pass through. There's not going to be any roads, nothing. It's going to be finished. Because the world would cease to exist. This is big stuff. We're not talking about spiritual stuff. We're talking realistically. This is the Midrash is saying, realistically, without Yaakov Avinu doing what he did in that spot on that night, the world would not exist. Pretty big. Now. Why did he have to sleep on it for that to happen? Why not whenever... um, Because it depended... It all depended... It all depended on... Hashem's prophecy to Yaakov Avinu. Not to Avram Avinu and Yitzchak. Not to Avram Avinu and Yitzchak. No. This was, you'll see. Just be quiet. Thanks. <laughs> I always wonder, what do people think that are actually just listening to the recording without the facial expressions? Like the, like the Tuesday night Kabbalah classes that people ask me about. They don't see my facial expressions when they listen to recordings, so they think I have a class that on Tuesday night. So let me just say this loud and clearly. I do not have a Kabbalah class. It's a joke. <laughs> so everybody hears. <laughs> um, nam. So now, this was all, by, by the way, this was all an introduction. We haven't even gotten to... Anything yet. Amnam, however. Now that we've answered the question as to why the world needed to stop Yaakov Avinu from going any further, which was because it needed to ensure its existence, its continued existence. He says, if you really want to ask a question, this is the question you should ask. This is the Zerashim Shon saying, now we're finally going to ask a question, as if already we didn't have enough things to ask about. Now he says, if you want to ask a question, this is the question. Why now? Why all of a sudden now is it time to ensure the existence of the earth? Like, hold on a second. Until now, what's been going on? Like, 
we're, we're thousands of years into the creation of the world already. Why is it that now Why is it that now the world decided, the earth decided that now, now you have to make our support. You got to make those yesodot, those pillars of support for the earth, so to speak, for the world. Now it, it's needed. Why did the world, so to speak, feel that it's now or never? Why when Yaakov Avinu was going through? Why wasn't it ever, this, ever before desperate to build its existence? Ve'od, and more, more so. Shenireh, mipnei she'im Yaakov, she'im Yaakov lo haya mit'atkev sham az, It seems that now, if we would have passed on and gone to Lavan's house, there would be no chance of him coming back and doing it afterwards. Or else the world wouldn't have stopped it. The world could have said, okay, he's going to Lavan's house now, so to speak. Then he's going to come back. And then he'll do it when he comes back. But the way that it happened now, where the world is basically stopping him, not going, that it meant that if you pass back, it's worthless. It's not going to work. Has to be done now. Right? And the question is why? Why wouldn't it matter after he came back? Why is it so important that it has to be done now? Okay, so this is where I need everybody to tie, put their seatbelts on. Okay. 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 Where was Yaakov Avinu going? He was going to Lavan's house to do what? What was he going to end up doing? He was going to get married. And then through that marriage, bring into the world the 12 Shevatim, the 12 tribes. That's what he was going to do. Listen to this. The 12 Shevatim are the existence of the world, period. The entire world was created... And is in existence for the 12 tribes. You'll see why. And it's, and it's interesting. Because later on it's brought down in Parashat Shemot that the Kiyum HaOlam, the existence of the world, are supported by the 12 tribes. And the Midrash says, Bizchut mini vre'u in the zechut of whom was the entire world created? Why does the world stand today? And the Midrash says, Ele Shemot Bene Yisrael. The world is in existence for Bene Yisrael, the 12 tribes. That's the entire purpose of the world. If you look in many, many uh, Kabbalistic uh, uh, teachings. HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world for Torah. Without Torah, the, the world doesn't exist. And it, and it needed a conduit. Bnei Israel were the ones who accepted the Torah. Therefore, Bnei Israel were the ones who stamped the existence of the world. Because Hashem said, if nobody accepts the Torah, I don't have a use for the earth. There's no, there's no use for the entire world. What is the use for it? If there is no Torah, there is no Kiyum, there is no existence. So the, the entire world was created for the 12 tribes. Because they were, going to one, they were the ones who were going to give birth to the rest of Am Yisrael. Now, now therefore, the Yaakov Avinu was going to now instate the 12 tribes. Hem keneged yud bet mazalot. These 12 tribes correspond to the 12 mazalot. What are the 12 mazalot? That are, we're talking about the mazalot that are in heaven. Right? What do you call them? Constellation. The constellations. The mazalot. Each mazal basically has a, um, 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 like a picture to it. Uchneget, and therefore, also, not only are the 12 tribes corresponding to the 12 mazalot, they also correspond to the yudbet chodashim, to the 12 months. Uchneget, yudbet tserufe shem havaya, and they also correspond to the 12 
variations of the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Hashem's name, the, what we don't pronounce, is Yud K Vav K, right? There's 12 special variations of the name Yud K Vav K. Different vowels. Huh? Different vowels. Meaning, uh, right. switching the vowels into different locations on the same word, right? And those 12 variations of the way of kind of mixing up the word Yud K Vav K correspond to different months. If you have like the, today's the modern Sidurim today, the Sephardic Sidurim, when you're davening Musaf, right? And right before you come to the last bracha of Musaf, where you say, uh, in some Sidurim today, you have all the, on the bottom, you have like a little chart that says Nisan is Yud K Vav K. Iyar is, let's say, K, Yud, Vav. Each month has a different variation of the Yud, K, Vav, K. And all of these, no, as we said, all of them have the same number, 12. The Mazalot are 12, the months are 12, the variations of God's name are 12. They're all divided in between this number. What does that tell you? They all correspond to the 12 tribes. They all correspond to the 12 Shavatim. There had to be 12 Shavatim. That's the existence of the world. It all corresponds. It's all mingled Together. Yaakov Avinu was going to become the father of the 12 tribes, who would be the reason for the existence of the world. As we see, the Mazalot are connected to them, which are, which are the stars. The months are connected to them. Yud Kevav Hashem's name is connected to them. Everything is connected to the 12 tribes. So, so the entire existence of our world today it's because of the 12 tribes. And he was going to do that. Here, it goes even further. The Midrash says in Parashat Vayeshev, the 12 tribes correspond to the 12 mazalot, the 12 months, 12 hours in a day, 12 hours in a night, 12 stones in the breastplate of Aharon Kohen, and all of that, and then it most goes more. Uh, 12 hours of the day, 12 hours of the night, uh, 12 months in a year, the Mazalot. These are all corresponding to the Shavatim. The number 12 obviously is very, very important here. Why is it important? Not because of the mazalot, not because of the months. It's all important because of the shavatim. There was 12 tribes. 12 tribes are responsible for upholding the existence of the world. Therefore, those things that are crucial in running the clock of the entire world are in numbers of 12. 12 months, 12 hours, 12 const- you know, the, the, the mazalot, the constellations, and so on and so forth. So, so far, so, so good. Looks like everybody's following this, except me. Ve'im <laughs> haya. And if Yaakov Avinu <clears throat> If Yaakov Avinu would bring into the world his twelve sons before the world would become strengthened with its support, he would not no longer be able to do it. This is why we're saying that the world was stopping him from going further to Lavan's house before sleeping on that stone. Why? He's saying because if Yaakov Avinu would have had the children before strengthening the support of the world, it would have not been able to be done afterwards. Shematzinu b'midrash b'parashat bereshit, because the Midrash says in Parashat Bereshit, Rav Huna b'shem Rabbi Amar, Rav Huna says in the name of Rabbi, Bedat berao, HaKadosh Baruch Hu used chokhmah when creating the entire world. Why? It says, because Shebarat Tzorkem Mezonotav V'achar Kach Berao Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu first created 
a human being's needs before creating the human being. Meaning Hashem first created the trees and the fruits and the animals and water and the earth. All of that was all created before Hashem created Adam HaRishon. Now he says the Midrash says in a funny way. The Midrash, not a funny way, but interesting way. The Midrash says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu used Chokhmah. What was this Chokhmah that Hashem created? He created the needs of Adam before creating Adam. Why does he have to say it like that? What's the big Chokhmah? Obviously, that's what you do. You create its needs and then you create it. If it comes into the world and doesn't have its food and stuff like that, it's not going to survive. So we'll, we'll, we'll understand that soon. Vachinami. Is this the same thing, like he creates a cure before he creates a disease or something like that? Something like that. We'll see. Vachinami, Parashat Tazriya. It's also brought down in Parashat Tazriya. It says, Im zacha adam. If a human being, if a man merits it, Im zacha adam. If a man merits it, Omrim lo, they say to him, Ata kadamta lechol ma'asev ereshit. You came before all of creation. Why are we saying this, by the way? Because it's brought down that before Hashem created the entire world, He created the soul of Adam, but not the body. He created Adam Arishon's soul, the Neshama. And then He created the world, and then He created the body of Adam and put that soul in it. Right? So therefore, it says in Barashat Tasriya and Midrash, if man merits it, meaning if he's good, they tell him from Shamaim, oh, you're amazing. And that's why you came before all of creation. Because his soul did come before all of creation. Ve'im lav, but if he doesn't, but if he doesn't live up to what he's supposed to live up to, if an Adam, if a true human being doesn't live up to the expectations of God, Omrimlo, they tell him, Yitush, Kedamcha. They tell him, you know, a fly, a mere insect came before you. Who do you think you are? If you're Zoche, if you live up to what you're supposed to live up to, they'll tell you, ah, you know, you came before everything else in this world. If not, you know what they tell the human being? Who do you think you are? Even an insect came before you. You're nothing. You came last. Everything was created and then you were created. That's how low you are. That's a midrash. He says, now we have to, pay, now we have to understand these two midrashim. First of all, what is the midrash trying to tell us? Hashem used chokhmah. What was that chokhmah? He created Adam's needs before creating him. What is this chokhmah? Ma to'elet adam im kadam la'olam or shelo kadam? What's the difference if... Adam Arishon was born before the world had everything in it? Or if he was created after the world had everything in it? What, what's the big deal if he came before the animals or after the animals? Before the trees or after the trees? What difference does it make really? <clears throat> so what's the chokhmah? Question number one. What is it talking about? There's a chokhmah that Hashem did this. Number two is, what's the big deal if he was created before the animals or after the animals? Before the trees or after the trees? So listen to this, guys. We're gonna, we're, um, I know it's a lot. Two, three different midrashim we're saying together, but it's all going to come together soon. Okay? Just keep following. It says there's a machlok in the Gemara, in Gemara Baba Batra, Daf Chafhe, page um, 25. Rabbanan, which are the Chachamim, they held, Al Hamazik Laharchiget Atzmo. Baba Batra in this section discusses. D- a damager and a damagee. Someone that's damaging and someone that's being damaged. Their property. Someone that's damaging a property, someone that's being damaged. So now what's the damage and damagee? There's a guy, he's, he has a well, a cistern, a well of water, right? On his land. And there's a person planting a tree on his own land. There's a line between their two fields. One has a well. And this guy is planting a tree on his own field, few feet away from where this guy has his well. 
Okay? But they're both building these things on two sides, their, their own fields. They're not coming into each other's fields. However, after the tree grows and grows and grows, what happens? It's, it's, um, shorosh, its roots are going to grow thicker and longer, and they're going to go possibly into the well of his neighbor, and they're going to damage this well. Right? Because the roots are going to go, and dirt's going to fall into the well, and he's not going to have a well anymore because of this tree that's being planted on his friend's field. So the Chachamim say, right? What do the Chachamim hold? The Baran Savri, Al Hamazik Laharchiket Atzmo. The Chachamim say, this person that's building, I'm um, building, this person that's planting the tree is the responsible party and he has to make sure to plant his tree far away enough so that it does not at one point destroy this person's well. That's what the Chachamim hold. So meaning, they're on the side of the Nizik, the damagee. They're saying, hey, this guy's got a well here. Right? You're planting a tree that's going to later on pro- possibly put its roots into this guy's well. Go and plant your tree further away. <laughs> Makes sense. Rabbi Yossi Sava, Rabbi Yossi says, Al hanizak No. Rabbi Yossi says, No. The owner of the well is the responsible party to move himself. This guy is planting his tree on his field. You're make, you've, you've made your well, or you're trying to dig your well on your field. Right? So, if at some point this guy's tree might damage your well, well, too bad. You should put your well far away from these kind of concerns. He doesn't have to be thinking, oh, is my tree someday going to grow roots? It's gonna... No. Who do we hold like in the Gemara? <clears throat> and it says over here, V'amar Rabbi Yehuda, Amar Shemuel, Rabbi Yehuda says in the name of Rabbi Shemuel, Halacha ke Rabbi Yossi. Halacha is like Rabbi Yossi. Which means what? You want to have a well? This guy is building, a, uh, <laughs> planting a tree. He doesn't have to be careful that his tree doesn't, he's, he's planting his tree on his own field. It's his own property. He's not doing it to your property. I later on it might come into your property. Okay. So dig your well further away so that there is no chance of his tree roots coming into your well. And that's the halakha, the Shulchan Aruch Paskins like this. This obviously is not just applicable to wells and trees, right? It's applicable to common day halakha on how did something get damaged and who damaged it. And we figure out from comparing to this case. <coughs> However, this is the kicker. Umikol magom. However, Moder Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yosef does agree to the Chachamim begirei delay. Meaning, Rabbi Yossi says, I only say my case, I only give my answer that the person, meaning the damagee has to be careful himself and you can't put blame on the damager because the damager is just doing something on his own property. I only say that when? When the damage is a possibility later on. But if the damage is imminent and right away, then I agree with the Chachamim as well that the damager has to move away. If someone's about to do something, even on their own field, which is inevitable that as soon as I do this, somebody or somebody's property is going to get hurt, it's my responsibility not to. That's on me. Only if there is a chance of a damage happening later on, then I'm not responsible. That's not my responsibility. I'm doing it on my own field. Clear? That's what Rabbi Yossi holds. Is that clear? Okay, so now. You'll see how beautifully the Zerah Shinshon ties this into everything else that we just said. <clears throat> to say so 
מינינג. פיש למה נטיעת האילן סמוך לבורו של חברו, it's understandable that when a person plants a tree next to the well of his friend, הגם שהרששים של האילן כשירשעו, כשישרשו בקרקע יפסידו הבור, it's understandable that yes, when these finally, when the roots of this tree start going deep into the ground, they're going to eventually probably damage the sky's well, However, Rabbi Yossi says, Zenoteya betoch shelo. He says, listen, this guy is planting his tree in his own field. Veze chofer betoch shelo. And this other guy is digging his well in his own field. So he says, just like this guy is allowed to do whatever he wants on his field, this guy is also allowed to do whatever he wants on his field. No one's hurting anybody right now. He's digging a well in his field. This guy's planting trees on his field. Right? Vein baal ha'ilan chayab la'archik et ha'ilan minabor. So the planter of the tree does not have to distance his tree from the owner of the well. V'lefi sheve sha'a shenotea ha'ilan because at the time that he's planting this tree, eno se shum nezek lefora shel chavero. He's not doing any damage at this point to the well of his friend. Ela ha'nezek baal achar zaman. The damage is coming later. Right now, when I'm planting my tree, I'm not damaging your property, I'm not damaging your well, nothing. I'm planting a tree on my own property. What's it to you? Can you shut that door, please? Aval. Do so you understand? Rabbi Yossi says, if there's a damage that's going to come later on, and I'm working on my own property, you're doing something on your own property, if something that I'm doing on my property might damage you in five years, I'm not obligated to change my plans because of you. You're supposed to think, okay, I'm making a well, I'm, I'm, I'm digging a well over here, he's got trees here, if I, don't my, if I don't want my well to get damaged, I should maybe dig my well 50 feet away. That's your responsibility. However, if I'm doing something on my field, right now by the border of your field I'm lighting a fire and it's dry season and that fire catches onto your field Rabbi Yossi says of course he's chayav of course the damager is going to be obligated because that's eminent it's happening now when it's happening now yes the person that's damaging is going to be obligated so you're not going to go to the other guy and say hey I lit the fire on my field I did whatever my property I'm not, I wasn't trying to like do nothing to nobody. I'm not responsible. You should have moved your field and trees away. What are you, crazy? You lit a fire right by my... You know what I mean? But on the other hand, if he's just planting a tree, he's not doing anything wrong. He's not doing anything damaging. I, later on, the roots might damage the guy's well. He could say, listen, so you, sh- you should have taken... You, sh- you take your well and dig it somewhere else. This is two differences in the halacha. Do you hear the difference in what Rabbi Yossi holds? The Chachamim held, no, it doesn't make a difference. Whether it's eminent now or a damage that might be done later, the obligation is on the damager. He needs to be careful. Rabbi Yossi says, no, the obligation is only on the damager when the damage is imminent and now. If it might be later, the obligation is not on him, it's on the damagee. It's on the receiving end. He should move away. Okay. Now, Aval... Okay. Now he says, "Uvenidun didan." Says in our case, "Haadam haolam hem mazikim zedze." Oh, I love this. I'm telling you, if you guys have been following, which I hope you are, I've really tried really hard. Please stop looking at me like I'm talking Chinese. Okay. <laughs> says in our case. האדם והעולם הם מזיקים זה את זה. אדם, a person, and the world. The world and the person, they damage each other. That's the relationship between a human being and the world. We have the power to damage each other, to hurt each other. שהעולם מזיק את האדם בתענוגיו. Because the world damages a person with its lust and its physicality and its luxuries. That's what damages a human being. 
That's what the world has. This world is a physical world. Come, enjoy, smoke, uh, 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 drink. drink. I don't know. I mean, drinking as long as you're not like drinking yourself to like you know oblivion. But I don't know. Different time of game. The things that you know, all the wrong things that a person has a ta'ava for. A person has a a a a a. What's the word? Give me the word. Not a natural tendency, a ta'ava, a, a, a desire and a lust for. These are all physical pleasures. Physical pleasures, obviously done in the wrong way. That's the yetzar hara. And that's what the world has in store for a human being. That's what damages a human being. Right? Why? Because the eye sees the halev chomed and the heart desires. Those are the two links. You see and you want and you desire. That's how the world works. It shows you these things. Ah, oh, look, ah, oh, look, this guy just got not this guy just bought the new Tesla. I gotta have the new Tesla now. I'm ordering it. I'm for sure ordering it. It's gonna come in 17 years, but I'm gonna order it. Because without the Tesla, what's life good for? Right? Until the next big thing happens and a Tesla becomes a, you know, or like, it, this is how we live. Isn't this the truth? This is exactly how we live. Like having weddings on a plane. You think it's not going to happen? It will happen someday. You'll see. You're going to turn around and go, oh, Rabbi like I said this in his shiur. People are going to have invitations with tickets, flights. You are invited to the flight of our wedding. You know? That is a smart idea. Yeah. If you do it, you never <laughs> <laughs> so ha'ayin, the eye sees and the heart desires. We see things and we want them. You know, if it wasn't, look, uh, people, people ask. I remember there was a rough one time I was at a lecture. He put it so beautifully. He said somebody came up to him. He was walking in Miami. I guess he was walking by the beach or something. And he had his head down with his hat, you know. So that he doesn't see improper things as he's walking. And somebody that was walking by him or with him comes to him and goes, you know what, you guys are disgusting. Isn't that nice to say to somebody just out of the blue? It's perfect, it's beautiful, it's a free country, you can. They might punch you back. <laughs> but that's what he says to him. He says, you guys are disgusting. So he goes to him, you mind telling me why you feel I'm disgusting? He says, look, look at you, you're walking by the beach, you have your head down, Right? Not to see women dressed the way they are. He goes, and why is that disgusting? He goes, because, look at me. Look at me. I'm looking at everything and everyone. Nothing happens to me. Nothing happens. There's nothing. You, you have to put your head down because you have such a sick mind. You probably have so many different ideas in your head and what happens to your body as soon as you see these women, so you have to put your head down. For me, Nothing happens to me. That's why you're disgusting. If you were not disgusting, you wouldn't have to hold yourself from looking at these women. So the Rav says to him, so let me ask you something. You looking at beautiful women dressed this way, you're telling me nothing happens to you? He says, no, absolutely nothing. She says, I turned to him and I said, I pity, I'm, I'm so sorry for you. I have mercy for you. I am so sorry. If only you knew what that emotion feels like. You've become so numb, you can't even feel that desire anymore. Me, it's still fresh for me. So I keep my head down, because I want that desire to be between me and my wife. You? What gives you that desire anymore? You're telling me right now that literally you're dead inside. That's what you're saying. Wow. <laughs> Not to take our desires for granted. A person shouldn't take these feelings for granted. At the right time, it's the way it's supposed to be. But what are we saying? That it's the eyes. If we see, we desire. But it's not always good. Because the more desire, the more you want, and the more normal it becomes for you, and then life has no meaning and no taste anymore. It becomes like the next car, and the next cell phone. And then, uh, you have one, six months later, you want the next one. You have this car. I, I always give the example of the car, right? You get that beautiful new car. You're like, ah, eh, eh. six months later, it's a car. It's a car, right? 
I asked everybody that like in the beginning when they got their Teslas. Right? How does it feel? Ah, it's good. It's a Tesla. But before it came, they're like, ah, 10 more days till my Tesla comes. You know? And then it comes. And then, how's the car? I don't know. Yeah. Turns on as soon as I get in it, it doesn't turn off. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's got, you know, everyone starts complaining about one thing that they were waiting for. But that's what it is. Our eyes see what's around us and we want it. People that live simpler lives, they live much happier lives because they don't go by the desires of their hearts and what their eyes see. They go about what's real, what really counts, what really matters. By the way, I want to share with you something. You know the difference between, you know, how do you say happiness in, in Hebrew? Simcha. That, simcha is like joy. Happiness is osher. Right? If you're Sephardi, you know the difference. Osher with an aleph means happiness, right? Osher with an ayin is what? Wealth. Osher with ayin is wealth. Osher with aleph is happiness. The difference between happiness, the eye, the letter ayin. You switch the aleph with an ayin, you get wealth. But what's wealth? It's in the eye of the, it's in the, eye of the person. It's the ayin. That's what wealth is. Somebody could be a millionaire, could be the most miserable person in the world. Because it decides everything else. You have 100, you want 200. You, have, you want 3 million, you have 3 million, you want 6 million. It's all in the eye. The ayin. The difference between osher and osher is ayin. Make sense? Did you guys catch that? Okay, continuing. <clears throat> so, so the world damages the human being, the person, through all these ta'anugim, these luxuries. Ha'adam maziket ha'olam ba'ashamav. In return, a person destroys the world and damages the world through, its, through his deeds and mistakes. Because of it, the world also gets hurt. Our avarot, our sins destroy the world. Because we live in it. You can't say, oh, what's what I do in my private time, how does that hurt anybody else? It does. It actually ruins the world. Our averot have an effect on the world around us. That's what it says. Ella. It says, however, there's a difference between the two. Shema shaholam maziketa adam. The way the world damages a human being, a person, nikra gire dile. That's, you know what kind of damage that is? Immediate damage. When the luxuries of the world damage a person, when the lust of the world damages a human being, that's right away. Ha'ayin ro'eh, the eye see, v'halev chomet, the heart wants, and then you go after your desire, the fact that you went after your desire, the damage is done. It's quick. The moment you do those averot because of your desire, it's done. You've been damaged by the luxuries around you, by the, by the world. Tekef. It's right away. Kesheyesh, olam yesh nezek. The fact that the world exists, damage exists. Shahara ayin ro'eh. Ha'ayin eno brishuto shal adam. And the eye is no longer in, in, in the command of the person. The tekef hu ro'eh, halev chomed. As soon as he sees, his heart desires. However, ma sha'adam maziket ha'olam, the way the human being, the person, so to speak, destroys or, de or, or damages the world, that actually comes later. It doesn't happen right away. Why? Because Hashem has mercy on us. We make mistakes, He waits for us to do teshuva, to, to, to repair the damage done. So when we do averot, the damage is not right away. The damage is not imminent, the damage is not quick on the world around us. It takes time. 
Do you see the comparison between the tree and the well and Adam and the, human, uh, and the world? It's between Rabbi Yossi and the Chachamim. So Rabbi Yossi held what? And that's how Lacha goes by it, right? Rabbi Yossi said that if the damage is not right away, who's responsible to pull back the damagee? In our case, if the damage is not right away, it's the earth responsibility to pull away. Right? Adam doesn't have to say, I'm responsible, I'm the one guilty of damaging you. Uh, my, my damage, I, I made a mistake now, maybe later on you'll get punished for it, if I don't do the shuba. You'll see what that, how that makes a difference here. So it says, and we find that the way that the world gets destroyed or damaged because of the mistakes of a person, they're not imminent and, and right away. They're just like the roots of the tree that damage the well, which is after a certain amount of time. It's not right away. It takes years. Because has a lot of mercy. And he waits and he keeps the sins to see if Adam will make to do teshuvah or not. If the human being, if Adam was created before the world, we're the damager, right? If the person was created before the world, the world would not be able to be created afterwards. Why? Because the world would come and damage the human being. We said, how does it work? If the damage is imminent and right away, then hold on a second. You're lighting a fire by my field. Move away. Don't, don't, don't light the fire here. I know it's your field, but it's right by the border of my field. The moment you light the fire, it's coming and it's going to burn my field. Move away. We said, who's responsible to move away? The person that's lighting the fire. So if Adam Arishon was created first, Hashem couldn't create the world anymore. Why? Because the world is the fire. Adam could say, hold on a second, I'm here. I'm the neighbor's field. You're about to light a fire that's going to hurt me now. You're not allowed to do that right now because I'm here. So example of the well. Let's say the person has a well in place already, right? And you bring your tractor next to the borderline where this, your neighbor's well is and you start digging. It's going to go into the guy's well. So who's going to be responsible? The person with the tractor. He can't say, hold on, I'm, I'm, building, I'm, I'm digging in my own field. What do you mean? My well was already here and you're damaging it right now. You're damaging my well. It's been here for 10 years. You should have gone, dug your hole somewhere else. So he's saying, if Adam Arishon was created first, Hashem couldn't create the world anymore. Why? Because the world would be the damager of Adam Arishon, and the, the way the world damages a human being is right away. Because the eye sees and the heart desires. The moment the world would come into place, Hashem would desire, uh, the human being, Adam, would desire things, and it would hurt himself. So therefore, Adam could turn and say, how dare you create this damaging, imminent damaging uh, 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 thing when I'm here. al halacha, you can't. Because you're creating a fire that's going to burn right now. And even Rabbi Yossi agrees in this case, that the damager is obligated. The damager has to be careful where he's lighting this fire. So here, compared to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu would not be able to create the world according to this pshat, if Adam HaRishon was already created. Why? Because I'm not going to put Adam into a world and then create the world, I mean, create Adam and then create the world that's going to damage it. 
Adam's gonna say, hold on a second. What did I do here? I didn't do anything wrong. You created something that's damaging me. I was already here. So you the I'm, I'm numb. However, if the world would be created first, then, as Hakadosh Baruch Hu, so to speak, Yachol Livroat Adam, then he could create Adam Arishon. Why? Because Adam Eno Mazik La Olam Begiredile. Because Adam doesn't damage the world right away. That's like the tree that's being planted that maybe in ten years might damage the well. I'm not responsible to. You know what I mean? That's not my responsibility. So when Hashem created the world first, He could create the world. The Adam after creating the world, because his damage is not imminent. It might not even happen. If Adam does teshuvah, he fixes the damage. He's metaken the damage that could have been through his mistakes. And human being cannot say to the world that was created before it, you're damaging me with your luxuries. Man can't turn to the world and say that. Why? And say, hey, you move away, so to speak. Because the world was there first. The world is going to say, hold on a second. I was here. I'm a tree. You're digging your well too close to me. I was already here. So move your well somewhere else. The world is the tree. The world is telling Adam, listen, you're, building, you're digging your well 15 feet away from me. I'm a tree. I'm a young tree. In 10 years, my roots are going to be 20 feet long. So you might want to take your well and plant it 50 feet away from me. So the, the Adam can't say, no, 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 no. Tree, you move away. The world's going to be like, what do you mean I move away? I've been here. The world turns to Adam and says, I was created before you. I don't have to do anything. You stop listening to your eyes and your heart. So you won't get damaged. I've been here. My job is to have luxuries. It's not my fault you keep giving in. Move away. Stop looking. I was here first. You turn your head. Go the other direction. You see a billboard in Robertson Boulevard? The billboard says, I've been here. Take another route. Don't look up. You can't blame me. I'm doing my job. I'm a physical world. I've been here. It's your job to move, not mine. Belachen. Therefore, what did we say? Im zacha Adam. If we said, if Adam, if man is zoche, if he merits. Remember that midrash. If a man merits it, if Adam merits it, they tell him what? Omrim lo, atak Adam tale ma'asiv ereshit. You came before the creation of the world. Remember we said, HaKadosh Baruch Hu created Adam's neshama before the world and created the body after the creation of the world. Two birds with one stone. Why? It says, because if Adam, if man is zoche, meaning if he does what he's supposed to be doing, they tell him, ah, you're wonderful. You were created before the world. Why? And therefore, And therefore, the world is responsible to distance itself from you. Because you've been so good, and you've lived up to what you're supposed to be like, therefore, the world can't say, I was here first. No, you could say to the world, hey, I don't want your luxuries. I don't want your desires. I don't want your tests. Move away from me. That's why there are chachamim in the world and there have been chachamim in the world that have literally killed their yetzar hara in many aspects of life. They don't get challenged with things anymore. Why? Because they've brought their neshama to the, to, to the core of what the neshama used to be in the beginning of creation. It's a kind of soul that says, I was created first, you move away. I was here first. You're damaging me. But if the Adam isn't living the way he's supposed to, isn't doing the mitzvot the way he's supposed to, then the world can say what? 
a worm, a fly was created before you. I was here before you. So don't look. You move. Why should I move from you? I'm here to stay. You came, so he says, when a person is zocheh, they tell him, you came before. And the world should distance itself from you. Not to make you do averot. Because of this, then it becomes the responsibility of the mazik, the damager, to move away. As we say in the Midrash, okay, hold on. And then the opposite is true also. Amnam, however, im lo zacha. If man is not zoche, meaning if he doesn't do what he's supposed to be doing in this world, and he's not, and he has not been koveshet yitzro, he has not overpowered his yetzer haram, they tell him, afilu yitush kedamcha. Even a insect came before you. Meaning, you can't blame the damage that has been done to you. You can't blame it on the world. Why? And you, oh, you can't blame the world for the damage that has become on you, that has come on you. And to tell the world, you move away. Why do you, why do you give me all these desires? Why are you always uh, you know, pumping my mind with all these thoughts and stuff like that? No, the world's going to say, no, you have the obligation to move away. You have the obligation to close your eyes. You have the obligation to control yourself. It's not my fault. I was before you. I was created before you. I'm here to stay. You're a guest here. So if you want, don't look. Don't desire. But if Adam becomes the Adam that he's supposed to be, he's not a guest anymore. He becomes the Balabait. Then he tells the mazik, no, you move away. I was here first. So it all depends on us. It all depends on what kind of a being we want to be in this world. Do we want to be a being that the malachim say, Ata kadamta, you came before the world, so that the world can say, okay, you're right, you were here before me, I'm not going to damage you anymore. And believe it, it works like this in the world. The energies in the world, that's how it works. The more a person brings themselves to a higher and higher level, the less and less the world tries to damage him. He does, it's like, there are certain things that are no, more, no longer challenges to that person anymore. That's just how things work. And this is the explanation of the Midrash that it says Hakadosh Baruch Hu, with, we said with Chokhmah, God created Adam's food and the trees and the fruits and the animals, things that Adam Arishon needed. It says Hashem used Chokhmah and created those before Adam. What was that? What did that mean? It means Barak Hakadosh Baruch Hu created the needs of Adam Arishon. Afterwards, he created the human being himself. What's the chokhmah? The chokhmah is, the wisdom behind it is, if Hashem would have created him first, he couldn't create the world anymore. Remember? We said if he had created Adam HaRishon first, he couldn't create the world anymore. Because that's the damager. I can't create what's going to damage Adam Arishon. Adam's going to say, hold on a second, I was here already. That's an imminent danger to me. The world is an imminent danger for me. It's full of lust and things that I shouldn't have. If I was here first, you can't now come and build a fire right next to me. The world is fire to me. It's danger. You can't create it. That's why it says Hashem with Chokhmah created Adam after creating everything else that he created for him in this world. Now he says, now we can explain. Yaakov Avinu wanted to con- con- continue on his journey. We're going back to why the world was stopping Yaakov Avinu. He wanted to continue on his journey. 
The world became like a wall before him. Not to let him move. Why? Why is it that the world wanted to stop Yaakov Avinu and not let him go any further? Lefisha'az. Because at that point, Adain lo hayashum Yisrael ba'olam. At that point, there was no Jew in the world yet. Judaism was not created yet. The Torah was not given yet. There was no Jew in the world. And therefore, velo nechshav sh'adayin lo nivra adam. It was as if that Adam is not created yet. Here the word Adam is being used to say that mere perfection that Hashem expected from His creation. Hashem created the world, put Adam Arishon on it in order to give Him the Torah. That was the whole point. It took long because Adam Arishon ate from the tree and we made mistakes. So it took until Har Sinai for us to get the Torah. But really, the Torah was supposed to be given to the first man, Adam and Chava. God created the entire world for Adam. Right? So it didn't happen then. So because we still didn't have the Torah in the world in Judaism, and now Yaakov Avinu was going to Lavan's house to get married and bring the 12 tribes who would bring the Torah into the world. And the 12 tribes would be the first pillars and the roots of Am Yisrael. And therefore, the world had to be as if it still doesn't really exist. Therefore, the, and, and, and the world did not have its supportive pillars, so to speak. And if Yaakov Avinu would not instate the supportive pillars of the world before having the Shevatim, he would not be able to do so afterwards. Why? Because the, the, world, the world is the damager. Yaakov Avinu is now going to bring into the world the purpose of the world, which were the Shavatim. So the world was saying to Yaakov Avinu, whoa, 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 whoa. Before you go and get married and bring the Shavatim into the world, the world has to be completely created. We're not complete yet. The world is not complete yet. We don't have our support system yet. You need to complete the earth and the world. Now put it into existence. Put its supportive stone, so to speak, into place. So that the world could say, I was here first. Because if the world can't say, I was here first, and the Shavatim come and say, we were here first, then the world cannot be created. It's not going to exist anymore. Why? Because the Shavatim can come and say, hold on a second. The world is damaging to us. Why is it here? We were here first. But if the world comes first, and then later on, Adam, people start making mistakes, those things can be forgiven. Those things can be fixed. But this, there was no fix to it. Because Adam, the Shevatim, could say, hold on a second, this world is not the type of world that we want. And therefore, the world wouldn't exist. So here, the reason the world, so to speak, was putting a wall before Yaakov Avinu was because the world was saying, if you go any further, when you come back, there is no coming back. There will be no physical world left. Because if the physical world comes after your spiritual world of the Shevatim, we will cease to exist. This, the physical world will cease to exist. Why? Because the physical world is like the fire. If you build your field first, and then I am the fire that comes afterwards, afterwards, you could just say, hold on a second, go light your fire somewhere else. I was here first. Meaning, the world was saying, first light my fire, and then go and state the Shabbatim. So that if the Shabbatim say, hey, you're damaging me, I could say, oh, I've been here, I was a fire long before you were born. Just don't come near me. Do you understand the analogy between the two? Is it clear? This is a crucial lesson on self-control. Human self-control. This is the entire Midrash is saying, HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world in a way that it's damaging, it's challenging. That's what the world is, right? You as a human being, if you're not at the height of what Adam is supposed to be, 
You have no ta'ana on the world. You can't say, oh, what was I supposed to do? This is the world. You have challenges, you have lust, you have desires, and I'm in this world. No. The world can say, hold on a second. I was here before. You knew what kind of world you're in. It's your responsibility to move away, to look away, to walk away. It's your responsibility to, to cover yourself. Not mine. If you, on the other hand, were great enough, if you bring yourself to the point of perfection that you're supposed to be, then the world will say, you're right. You were first. I will try my best not to come in your way because you were what first. I'm the damager. But if I was first and you were created after me, then it's your responsibility to move away. And for most of us, that's how the world is for us. For the most part, that's the world that we live in. We live in a physical world and we're not, we're not in the caliber of Moshe Rabbeinu and Shlomo Amelech and David Amelech and all the tzaddikim of the world. We're not in that caliber. We're not. We're not there. Uh, at least I know I'm not there. So, therefore, it is our responsibility to move away from that lust and the desires that the world gives us, that puts in our way. There are you know, so many challenges, so many different tests that a person goes through in life. Especially for men. This, this, this shi'ur was especially important for men. Ha'ayin ro'eh v'alev chomed. Most of the problems that men, Jewish men, have in the world today are averot that are done through the eyes. We live in a digital world. Right? Everything is at our fingertips. One click away, Gehinam opens up. Quite literally. One click away. And that's the Ayn Ru'ab Alev Khomed. So many marriages fall apart. So many relationships fall apart. Why? Because the guy sees things, the guy has seen things, and that's what he expects in for the rest of his life. Or that's what he has in his mind for the rest of his life and ruins the marriage, ruins the child, ruins everything. It's the most destructive thing. So I must say in this shiur, for those that are listening, those that have smartphones, those that have tablets, those that have computers, for men and women both, in home, outside of the home, you must, must absolutely put filters on them. Absolutely. There is no saying, oh, I don't, I don't do... It's a very big danger it's a fire next door. No one messes with a fire next door. Oh, maybe it won't come here. It's literally next door. And Baruch Hashem, there are wonderful organizations that put filters on phones and tabs and computers for free. Everywhere. Los Angeles, Beverly Hills, New York, all these major states that have Jewish communities have centers that you go, you give your phone in, you give your laptops in, and they put... Free, for free. It's a free service. And they put uh, filters on for you. And your, work, your phone works just fine. Your tablets work just fine. You could play with it. Uh, uh, you, could, uh, you could work with the filter the way you want it so that it doesn't completely like, uh, you know, make it difficult for you to work or whatever it is. But at least something. Some kind of filter the, the, uh, our phones should have. Those are the challenges. So that Bezrat Hashem... After 120 years, we could all be zocheh to be that kind of a neshama that the malachim say what? Wah, ashrecha, praiseworthy you are. You were created before the entire world. We have to work on ourselves to become the human being that HaKadosh Baruch Hu expects of us. What human being is that? The kind of human being that Hashem says, you I created before the entire world. You came first. Because we embody the neshama that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created, not the body. We want to embody the neshama, not the physical body, the spiritual body. Baruch Adonai Le'olam, Amen ve'amen.